CBS 46 News presents Public Affairs on Peach. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Public Affairs on Peach. I'm CBS 46 political reporter Giovanna Dierpik. Now, with all of the rhetoric flying back and forth, the TV ads and the phone calls to six district residents, pretty much everybody knows that Democrat John Ossoff and Republican Karen Handel are squaring off in the District 6 runoff election. The winner will succeed Tom Price, who's now President Trump's Health and Human Services Secretary. Now, a record amount of money has poured into this campaign, and we're going to discuss it for the next half hour. Here's one thing that keeps us guessing which way the race is going to go. Voters from Cobb, DeKalb, and Fulton counties have already begun to vote early. Others will head to the polls the day of the runoff election, Tuesday, June 20th. And we begin our discussion with Democratic strategist Theron Johnson and Republican strategist Seth Weathers. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. Good to be here. Okay, so Theron, let's start with you. When I talk to Republicans out on the streets, they're party loyal. It doesn't matter what happens, they're going to stick to the Republican candidate. Why do you think that your candidate is going to emerge on top? Well, I think the 6th district is changing. I think that yes, there are traditional conservative Republicans who are going to vote for the Republican no matter what. But what's been so unique and very interesting about this John Ossoff campaign is that he's actually a Democrat appealing to Republican voters when he talks about cutting wasteful spending. I mean, if you look at his ads since the primary, he really hasn't focused so much on just being a Democrat and, and being a newcomer. I think one of the things that's going to be appealing about his candidacy is that he's not a career politician. I mean, we just, the country just elected a non-career politician in Donald Trump. And so I think that if you look up the makeup of that district, which is changing, it's becoming younger, a lot of millennials are living there, a lot of educated white voters who probably have voted Republican and Democrat in some of these elections. I think John Ossoff has a campaign that appeals to those folks. Now, the challenge is he's also got to make sure that he keeps his base fired up. And I think that's going to be the duality that he's going to have to bring to the campaign. But uh, couldn't that be an asset to him that he's a chameleon? Because I understand that he has to appeal, t appeal to those independents. He has to appeal to those Republican women. So the fact that he kind of crosses, skirts that line, that could help him. Absolutely. And I mean, he's talking about issues that matter most to women. I mean, a lot of these uh, issues that he's talking about are actually creating small business jobs, more tech jobs. These are jobs that a lot of people in that district are attracted to. A lot of these folks are, yes, your traditional suburbanites, but also you have the pockets in the district like DeKalb and also Fulton and East Cobb. These are people who actually work from home that are actually resonating with his message around small business. So I think John, listen, he's a phenomenal candidate. He's something different. And I think he's definitely been able to appeal to a vast amount of voters in that district. Okay, Seth, let's go to you. John Ossoff seems to have the momentum from the get-go, he had the names behind him, Congressman Lewis, Congressman Johnson. He exceeded expectations, it seems like, at every turn. Why do you think that your candidate is going to be able to beat John Ossoff? I, I think it's the district, and you know, I think Theron made a point that is uh, true. One of the appeals that uh, Ossoff has right now is he's essentially pretending to be a Republican in his ads. But I think we know from the people that are supporting him and they're backing his campaign, that's clearly not how he's going to legislate. And so I, I think it's, it's, a, it's an attempt to be a little bit dishonest about who he is to try to appeal to Republicans in this race. And if you'll notice, his ads are very nondescript in the sense that they don't say he's a Democrat. Uh, they don't really tell you what party he is. Um, and so, yeah, they're going to reach out and they're going to try to pull as many Republicans as they can. But I think there's so much attention on this race right now, it's going to be a little bit hard to do that. People are, are pretty well, well aware of where the lines are drawn party-wise. Um, but I, I think that even from the early voting, it still looks like we'll still trend Republican. And, you know, Democrats spent $10 million in the first round of this race and only got 1% more than Hillary Clinton received in the same district just back in November. And so if you spend $10 million and you only gain 1%, I, I would not be thinking too highly about how great you're going to do in, in that race. But he still came out first. He came out yeah. first in a, in a runoff, but he still, you know, did not have 50 percent because there were so many Republicans in the race. But in a lot of polls, the highest he was polling was 43 percent. He ended up with 48 percent. And that goes back to what I was saying about expectations going forward. What do you think is going to be able to stop him? 
I think that you know both sides are very motivated right now, and so I think what we're doing is essentially increasing turnout. But I, I feel like that that's almost equalized on both sides due to the passion. So it's it's going to be a higher turnout, but I think the numbers will remain about the same. Okay, so we're talking about turnout, gentlemen. Which key group do you think is going to turn out the most, especially given this lawsuit where the federal judge reopened it? Well, that's, a, that's another thing is whether or not that holds up. I mean, I've, they're changing election registration <coughs> law on the fly. I mean, I've, I've never heard of something like that. I, I don't see how that holds up in court. Well, Aaron? you know, the thing Seth has got to understand is that this is a federal race. So this was a federal law that was basically enforced. And so this judge ruling that you can reopen voter registration was nothing wrong with that. The second thing is, is that John Ossoff has proven that during the early vote period, that's how he really had that margin of victory. And one of the things I want to push back on my good friend Seth in saying is that, yes, he did spend $10 million. But we all know he knows this because he's worked on special elections. It's very hard to get voters out during a non-traditional election day. So he had to spend that much money to really make sure that he got his base out. Million? But, but, here, but here's the one thing that I think Republicans are struggling with. A year ago, when you and I were talking and you go around the city and you talk to folks, you had a guy named John Ossoff, or any Democrat, who said they were going to run for that Republican seat. No one ever thought that a Democrat had a chance. John Ossoff has predicted and basically shown that that's, 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 that's not the, the case in this, in this district. Okay, we've just gotten the conversation started. We're going to come right back with much more. Stay with us.